Hey y'all, what up? This your boy Jay Givens, West Coast, right now, Las Vegas, Nevada, LVNV, and you rocking with my big homie, Quan59 on Gorilla Cross Speak Life Radio. Keep it locked in right here. Yeah, welcome back to Gorilla Cross Speak Life Radio right here on GorillaCross.com and SpeakLifeRadio.com. I'm your host, Quan59 with Simply T What up, dog? and DJ12 on the ones and twos. We got these crazy phone lines working, so we're going to give John Gibbs a call and talk to him. Exclusive conversation right here on Gorilla Cross Speak Life Radio. A lot of people were complaining because we hadn't had John Gibbs on last year. They're like, finally, you got John Gibbs on your radio show. And what we were saying is we've had John Gibbs, so that means you haven't been listening, listening that long. Yeah, We didn't yeah. have him on last year, and I, I, I didn't even realize that we didn't have him on. But there was a couple times he took over the radio show yeah. when we were in California doing it live. You I know what I'm saying? It. But the year before, season seven, we had him on three times, actually. Yeah, a lot. A lot, of, a lot of people might not have known him back then. You know what I'm saying? So maybe they weren't really paying attention. Well, they don't, man, he family. But we, yeah, but you know we, had, we had him on twice. We had him on with Plato, and we had him on solo. And we actually went out to San Diego and covered his event live, his album release party for four seasons. Live Set in straight, San Quan. Diego with Social Club, Ruslan, Jay Gibbons, Set Believe, straight, you know what I'm saying? So all you guys complaining that we never have John Gibbs on, we have him on all the time. And he's here right now. Season premiere. I'm so excited, man. Season premiere. We get John Gibbs on right now. John, you there? Yes, sir. What's going on? Chilling, man. How you doing, bro? I'm well, brother. I am well. That's good, man. Very excited to have you, bro. We heard this crazy track like two weeks ago. Crazy track. It was you and Jay Gibbons. Cousin Neighbor. Tell us about that, bro. Yes, man. Uh, We we did that like uh, sometime last year and sat on it for a minute. And it was just right time to put it out, you know, to kind of just give give folks that pay attention to what we do. An opportunity to hear something that same been yet, you know. Now it was a uh, very. Now, is there more to come from Cousin Neighbor? Uh, I mean, yeah, but you know, we. Like, we waiting just like everybody else is waiting for that. You know what I mean? Like, we just kind of just having fun with that. That's just a fun thing. And, you know, potentially, um, you know, potentially after, you know, we get what we got to get done solo, um, you know, potentially something could come out of it, you know, major. Now, what's going on with John Gibbs' solo career? What, what's, what's up next for you? We know Four Seasons was a dope project, man. You guys came out with Dream Junkies a little bit after that. And that album, man, people were going crazy over that. So what's what's next for you? I'm just working on my... Uh, I feel like this is my real debut um, album. Um, I've had a lot of time to like um, work on it while being in somewhat... Uh, of of what this industry is like and understanding like understanding all that you know um, I'm, so like right now I'm working on this album um, I'm I'm heavy much more heavy into the, like production side of this album like you know creating skeletons and then you know um, having musicians come through and play what I envision the musician playing and uh yeah, man. I mean, other than that, you know, I'm trying to tour. Tour? Album tour. That's what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Get on the road. Make that money. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean. So, rapper. Yeah, yeah. Singer. And now you making beats now, man? What's up with that, man? You try, you, you try. Yeah, man. I, I'm, realizing, I'm realizing that music is music. And this is freeing me up a lot from from a lot of stuff, but like I'm realizing that music, um, when you learn how to speak the language of music, like like actual like notes and stuff like that, then it, it no longer becomes just like singer rapper, you know. It becomes like no, this is music, you know. Yeah, and I think yeah. I think that the way I want uh, my legacy to be left on this earth is one that was like a musician, you know. Like I want to be at the live show playing the instruments as well as you know spitting some some writings or 
or singing something, you know. So, dope, dope. I'm yeah. just I'm I'm really entering into a new level of uh, understanding of the whole music thing. Now, tell us a little bit about that. You said that this next project you put out is going to be more like a debut to you instead of uh you know Four Seasons was more of a you know kind of learning experience for you. What have you learned right. from Four Seasons to now that's uh that's making you think that way? Uh, Four Seasons, when Four Seasons was coming out, while wow, like like you know my most of my energy went into making the music, like a part of me was concerned with. Um, you know, getting like the music being talked about, um, and now, now going into this album, um, I'm not necessarily concerned with the music being talked about because I know my role um, more so than ever. And the album is kind of self-titled, um, not not like you know, it's just it's just a self-titled album to me because like I know my role. So much so, like from you know, even touring with Four Seasons and like performing it live and seeing how people received it, and you know, being able to talk in between songs, like I realized, like all that was like before this point was play play, you know, and it's like really kind of um, step into my role, and uh, that's why I feel like it's my debut. Yeah, just because I, I understand how to make an album now, even just through transitions from. You know, playing one song live to playing the next song live, like how smoothly that needs to go in the album making process. That way, it can be, you know, uh, done live in the same manner. So, so it sounds like you're trying to make a complete album, that type of album that somebody's just not gonna skip through the songs. They're gonna listen to the whole no, thing. No, nothing, nothing through. gets skipped. Nothing. Yeah. Dope, dope. So yeah. now, with you getting into the beat making arena. Who are some of your influence, uh, influences as a beat maker? Like, who do you kind of go to for inspiration and to discover new sounds? Or Nobody. Dope. Uh, I don't, like, see, the thing is, I'm so new. I'm so new in, like, actually knowing how to, like, do it rather than just, like, putting in, like, my little two cents, like, with producers around me. Like, I'm sitting here just, like, playing what's in my heart you know like I don't listen to nothing to get inspired yeah um and I just started like really getting on this so like I will say that um for like the past year I've been listening to a lot of alternative music not really too much hip hop like yeah just a lot of alternative music and that's like kind of quickened my spirit to like be um delighted by like alternative sound and uh right now like in this in this process of making this album like it's just been like you know kind of out of the overflow and the abundance of hearing all that music for so long um that this new sound or not even new sound but just um cultivated sound is coming out you know and that excites me because yeah. the thing about you you're a dope lyricist you know you, you know your vocal right. capabilities is off the chain but the thing i always like about you though is i feel your music it's got it's got a heart wow. to it, and the fact that you're saying that you're creating you know beats, you're putting more of your heart into your music, it excites me for this project wow. coming up. Yeah, man. I, like, I mean, it goes back. It all goes back to like this, like this album. Why, why I, why I say I feel as if it's my debut is because I think it will be understood as my debut as this person on earth with a role. I think that it'll be heard that way, it'll be felt that way, and that's why I feel like, you know, it's literally out of like the abundance of my heart, you know. And I, um, like, I had to go through like depression and like all these things and realize like what I thought I wanted wasn't what I wanted mm. to get to this point, you know, to where like I actually do now, now, like you know, have a deeper understanding of my role um, on planet Earth, and like I'm supposed to make music, you know, like I'm supposed to make music that like will make people so happy they won't have any hate for their brother in their heart you know and it's, you know it's the love of, you know it's the love the father is in you it's not capable for you to hate your brother you know what i mean so like that's my role like that's dope man you know? and you had a big yeah. season where you were doing a lot of features too and i think that's something that uh 
helped you get noticed a lot too because you know every time you got on, got on a feature it's like you almost embarrassed the, the the song you were getting on or the artist of the song you were getting on and i know that's not necessarily intentional because you just are putting your best foot forward in doing that um so tell us about yeah. that man tell us what, what that was like working with different artists that, that maybe you had looked up to or, or just kind of heard about and then you finally got to work yeah. with them and they get on a song and then hear some of their fans saying like man who's this dude he yeah. killed it on um, my favorite rapper's song you know what i'm saying yeah yeah um i mean first of all i want to say thank you to anybody that ever reached out for me uh to get on that song you know because i just you know um spreading the word about like what i do um so i'm very grateful um it's been it's been nothing but practice for me, man. It's been nothing but practice for me, um, and, and I, that's what I'm that's what I'm most appreciative of. Like, like I noticed you said, uh, like you know, embarrassing. That's that's not you know, and you said like it's not my intent to like you know, I yeah. just want to make the song better with what I got to offer, you know. So that's been and even so, like that's been really very helpful um, with just uh, my writing. Um, writing like craft and like understanding when in a verse you can you can accelerate yeah mm -hmm. and when in a verse chill out and when in a verse like you can set up a moment in a verse like just within 44 seconds you know what i'm saying and uh like it's been very helpful to like expand in how i think about writing a full song you know yeah so. and I, I think we've seen you grow in that uh in that stage too from four seasons to doing that 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 having that feature season yeah because yeah. Even when yeah. I hear Four Seasons, like, I like Four Seasons, but I know, mm -hmm. like, I can't wait for your next album because I know the potential you the have, yeah. and I know where you're at right now lyrically in Four Seasons. Like, yeah. the steps you took right after you dropped Four Seasons it is ridiculous to me, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I was watching the Line for Line on Track Stars. Big shout out to Track Stars. Um, and they were doing Line for Line, you and uh, I can't remember who they were, who, who I can't remember who yeah, you were Jay up Cole. against. J. Yeah. Cole, yeah. And, uh, I feel like that was unfair, but yeah. Yeah, and some of it was unfair because I'm like, <laughs> they should have put your features up against him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because some I mean, like he put out he, he put out Forest Hills Drive, you know, two thousand fourteen at the end of the year. I put out four seasons at the end of two thousand thirteen. Yeah. You know, what yeah. I mean? like, you know it's kinda dated. You know, yeah. I don't yeah. even listen to four seasons no more. It's keep it one hundred. Yeah, exactly. And what, you, and what you talk and what you're talking about with your style changing and knowing when to kinda of speed up, knowing when to fall back, I really heard that on that reconcile can't take this from you feature. Like you implemented so many different like Delivery flows in that in, the, in that little verse right there, you know. So I feel where you're coming from. Yeah. It's yeah. like if, if they put your features up against, you know, but e yeah. But e and I, and, I'll, and I'm not really trying to focus on that. Yeah. What I'm trying to focus on is the see, evolution. seeing that growth uh, and, and that quick yeah. growth. You know, what I'm saying four seasons came out, and right when 2014 hit, you started doing features, and it was like I was like, mm -hmm. wow, man, like the what growth. just what yeah. just happened? You know, what I'm saying. And, and that's why I'm really excited yeah. about the next album because even with the production, like you're saying, you're going to be more focused on the production and, and you're taking a bigger role in, in being involved in the production because I think that's something like you yeah. had good production on Four Seasons, but I know that's something that, that wasn't fully up to par, you know what I'm saying, to where you want to be and where you're mm -hmm. headed right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I like with this one, like, it literally is my vision, you know, Um one of the hard things about making an album when you have other people involved um, that may even know more about you about the, the process of an album, which mm -hmm. I didn't really know going into four seasons. Yeah, like, I, I didn't really know the process of making an album. I just knew I wanted to make music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like now that I have an understanding, like and like I know what I want to hear, you know. And it's not even like like at first I thought it was like this competition thing where I got to keep up with the Joneses. You know what I mean? But now like nah. Like I'm really going some like visionary type stuff and just you know creating a mood and creating a creating an environment um, where where the, the sounds that I want to play can be played you know yeah. and I, I I realized that nobody was gonna be able to do that and like articulate the way I, I wanted to be articulated other than me you know yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, like while I'm not like you know I ain't you no know, super producer or nothing but like I, I have the skills now to do that and then delegate responsibility to the people I feel like could play it better than me yeah you know and be like this is the framework and then I want you to excel in this and then we, we all end up having way more fun it's a much more easier process 
because like we know what we're doing you know like there's no like there's no like confusion on like oh uh, i thought i wanted this but it yeah. don't sound right so now i want it to sound like this and i think Whereas, that's good like, that you, you said there the, the competition where you felt like you had to compete with other people around you and now you're just like let yeah. me just go out and make dope music yeah. let me make what's in my heart and and it's gonna come out right. dope because first of all you're doing it for God. Second of all, you know you're talented musically. Yeah. You know that's your gift. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing. A lot mm-hmm. of people are doing music without knowing that's really their gift, gift yeah. and, and really what they're supposed to be doing. So they're they're trying to force something. They're trying to sound like other people, you well, know what I'm saying? Well let me say, like, even even like I had to realize that I'm not even doing this for God. Like I'm I'm not even doing this for God because then I would still be trying to compete with yeah. the other people that call themselves doing this for God. Because yeah. like when you feel like you're doing something for God, then it's like this this like innate responsibility you feel you have when like really like I'm totally dependent on God for this. So like I'm actually doing this with God, you that's know? Dope. And that's when I realized, dang, I don't have to. I don't have to compete. Like Actually, I'm just gonna have fun with you, God. You know what I'm saying? Like, now. in my little keg, we're gonna have some fun, you know. And wow. if the people like it, look, the fun that we have, then they'll come join the fun. And yeah. it's literally gonna be like when they come to the show, it's gonna be like we in my cave. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like I mean, the cave I was in with God, and we are gonna have fun. Like that needs like, to be that's a, on that needs you know, to be a t-shirt. I'm not I, doing it for God. I'm, I'm doing, doing it with God. God. And musically, man, you in a good place, man. You know, I, you know, I like Buddhists, man. They be trying to find Zen and Nirvana or whatever. I feel like the way you talk, yeah. I feel like musically, you kind of entering into that, you know, oneness or whatever you want to call it, man. And what's right. and what scares me though, this this is what makes me nervous, because mm-hmm. to hear you talk about Four Seasons the way you talking about it, the album was dope. You know what I'm saying? The album was dope. Even though yeah. listening to it, I knew your second project is gonna be, it was gonna be better. I knew it was a a start, but man, it was a dope start. You know what I mean? American Dream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you had so many, to me, you had so many hits on the album. So now I'm like, yo, this dude's second album. If he's feeling the way he's feeling about Four Seasons, the dude's second album is going to be monumental. Yeah. Straight up, man. And I think not listening I to hip hop is, is a good thing, too. You know what I'm saying? You've been listening to other stuff to get inspiration. I think that's big for an artist. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, hey, I mean, don't get it don't get it twisted like i was depressed for a long time before like i could figure figure this out like i was depressed like you know four season came out and you got the critics you know and i paid attention to them critics more than i paid attention to the people giving the praise like yeah, yeah i paid attention to the critics and like i listened to what they had to say and they were saying oh you sound like this person or you know or you know you know like it was a lot of stuff like that they was like you know touching on my insecurities you know what i mean like and that's where i was like yo like am i supposed to i was about to quit you know like i'm touring i'm wow. doing all this stuff that dudes don't get to do and i in my head i'm like yo like, i'm done i'm through i'm done getting shout outs from lecrae yeah. talking about he was filming the project you know like now talk right, about that know, real like, quick with all that i'm like yo yeah that's cool you know but like, yeah i sit here by myself in my bed you know what i'm saying like i'm depressed you know what i mean like now, I'm, I'm i'm dealing with this and that and this and that you know so like like literally like this album is on some debut like like nah like john like you will understand you understand why it's john gives you will understand why it's you know so rebel like you will understand all that because i've just come to the understanding um it says like the, the man's heart is like deep waters you know what i'm saying and you should go in it to like get understanding in those deep waters and if you think about uh like the world like they know more about space than they do the water that we you know are surrounded by yeah. so like it's some it's something crazy about going deeper now i want to talk i want to touch on that depression real quick because i think a lot of people deal with the mind they deal with depression now was that yeah. was that mainly because of music and some of the criticism you were getting or was it other things in life or or do you take music so serious that that's how it affected you? I mean, I think it's a combination of both, like, taking music very seriously because, like, honestly, this is the thing that pulled me out of, like, a lot of, like, the trouble that I was getting into. And it felt like if I don't, if I don't, if I don't succeed in this, then I'm, like, I know what else I could, quote, unquote, succeed in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's not yeah. going to be, that's not really going to be beneficial 
and I'm gonna just be sitting here stuck, you know, like you know, in in a in a bad position. And like honestly, I'm not far removed from that. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I feel like me and God kind of met on terms where He was like, "Look, oh, you want to make music? He was like, that's the desire of your heart. Okay, I would love for you to make music with me. You know what I mean? And like when I I felt like that was threatened. I felt like that was threatened a lot of times. Like looking at the comments that people said, which is why people gotta be people gotta be different about how they come at. Um, these artists, you know, that are doing this and like literally trying to do this for their live livelihood, you know, like people yeah. gotta be a little bit more different. A lot of people say stuff that they don't even really know what's going on, you know what I'm saying? And, like, especially when you put so much of yourself story. in something. Yeah. But pretty much, like, you know, the depression came from that, and then also, you know, um, I just didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know if people really, um, like, believed in me, you know, like, 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 you know, just. I didn't know if I believed in myself. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I didn't yeah. know. It was, it was so many different variables, man, that just like, you know, depression is no joke. Like, all that stuff comes at your brain and you'll be like, man, like, man, what's going on? And then you got all this attention on you and it don't, it's just, it's just gray. It's all just noise. It's no, 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 like, clear sound. You know, it's just noise. And it's like, ah. And, and you got. But I've been able to categorize that noise and like literally make it sound some way. Yeah. You know. And how I see it, man, you got the mark of a true artist, in my opinion. You know, I look at the the Van Goghs and the Rembrandt or the Rembrandts and Michelangelos and all them, and you think about the the depression that they went through and the creation oh, of man. their art, the pain and the, the the blood, sweat, and tears that they put into their work. And to me, that separates yeah. an artist from somebody just doing this casually, you know what I'm saying? Or they just want to yeah. be within the flow, within the mix of whatever, yeah. you know, what's popular, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And the thing is, yeah, I, 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 I hear this when I listen to your music. I'm like, this dude like really cares about what he's doing. And he's really caring about yeah. what he's creating. He's really caring about how it's affecting those listening to, uh, listen to it. And to me, like, it's crazy yeah, to hear you going through, going through what you was going through, but it's not surprising to me just because I how I see you as an artist, you know? Yeah. But well, I, yeah, well, I, res- yeah. I respect you for being yeah. so transparent because it just shows me that you're taking, um, uh, you, you're not taking this lightly. You're taking this as a serious... Yeah, hey. Go ahead, my bad. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's like like what you're saying, like, like to, to elaborate on that, like, I don't consider this to be just something for some niche market. Like, I literally want like the music that I make to enter into the soul like that is my desire like fully wholeheartedly I'm not gonna shy away from it like I want it to enter into the soul of every person on this planet yeah like, that is my desire and I and that is my desire it's not for no niche market it's not for like like if you want to you know I've learned what like this quote-unquote industry um is and like like you know, even that was depressing. Like learning that, like and realizing, like, oh, there is a niche market, and there is like a science to how this stuff gets put out to these kids that come to these shows that we we excel in. You know what I mean? And get books for it. You know, and like with this album, like I really want to like tear all that down. I want to tear it down. I want to like vandalize. Um, just all that and just be like hey man music is music and it is for the soul like music yeah. is for the soul if, even if it's derogatory even if who's doing it not knowing that they saying stuff that's gonna tear my soul down it's for the soul Dope, I don't care what type of music you're making like music when you hear it it's gonna hit you inside you know what I'm saying so like I don't care if it's like Christian or not Christian I don't care if it's Heavy, heavy metal or not, like when you hear music, when you hear sound, it's gonna hit you in your soul, and like that's what I had to realize, man. And that just frees me from so much um, stress, you know. Now, what would the advice be for a younger artist that, that might be going through the same thing you went through uh, during that time period, and even with the internet stuff? Because bottom line, people aren't gonna change. People are getting worse with comments. You can hide behind a computer. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you can say anything to anybody and hide behind that computer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. how would you tell tell a young artist coming up that might have the same desires as you have or you had when when you were uh, first starting with Four Seasons and and before that? 
uh, what advice would you give them of how to handle that and maybe even avoid uh, the things you went through and had to go through? The advice? Yeah. I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any way to avoid what I went through. Um, I don't think there's any way to avoid it. I think you have to go through it. Um, the advice I would, I would say is just, you know, keep going. <laughs> like, like there's no way to really sugarcoat the fact that like, you know, if you, if you consider yourself being a person on planet earth that is literally designed like your makeup, your DNA, the way you respond to things is to express your, to yourself through music, you're probably going to go through some depression. Mm-hmm. Um, you're probably going to go through some of these things. So like the advice I'll give you is just be prepared, like do whatever you can and have people around you that will tell you to keep going yeah. like, and not be yes men about it. Like they'll yeah. tell you what you need to stop doing and what you need to keep doing. You know what I mean? Like, don't don't just be out here on some empty god dream type. Like, I want to be famous. Like, that is not what. I don't think that should be what any of this is about. Like, yeah, it's not about fame. Like, like I understand. Like, I want this to be my career, and I want to uh, provide for my family through the means of music. Like, of course, I want that. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I want to be my career. You know? Yeah. But there's a whole there's a whole another side to it that should not be perverted by the 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 need or the want for fame. Like I'd rather people not know my name. That way I won't keep talking about it as much. Like when the fools want to slander somebody, you know? Like yeah. that that stuff is stressful and depressing if you look at it and it's hard not to see it, you know what I mean? When people, you know, come at you all type of sideways, you know, especially if you come come up how I came up like you don't just let nobody talk to you like that or yeah. talk about you like that yeah, yeah. you know but I've had cats like Belief and Ruslan telling me nah dog you need to chill you know like let them they're, they're, they're not even here right now you know and like yeah. that's what I had to realize like these people aren't even like five feet away from me for me to really be upset I've never seen them yeah um, so like my advice to the to the younger people I mean, even older people that are you know trying to do it like this hey like prepare yourself because this is not no easy job. It's not. Yeah. And the reality is, some people hate just to hate. It makes them feel good. It makes them feel cool. Yeah, it's their own yeah. insecurities yeah. that they're dealing with it. And, and that's why they have to try to, you know, put somebody else down. Or it's the jealousy they have because, let's face it, there's a lot of people rapping these days. Yeah. There aren't a lot of people rapping at the level you're on. And I think a lot of it is jealousy because they want to be in that position. And I think that's something that people do need to realize. Like, just stop. Stay in your own lane. Know what God has for you to do in your life. You know what I'm saying? And I think so many people get caught up looking in somebody else's lane and what God is doing in someone else's life that that's why the jealousy kicks in. Yep. That's why the their mm-hmm. own insecurities kick in and, and start being revealed. And everybody's an expert. Oh, yeah. Everybody's an expert. Everybody's an internet yeah. expert. Everybody, everybody, everybody has, a, has a blog on Facebook. Everybody has the potential to make a number one record. They just yeah. don't. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, yeah, not yeah. with that noise. And that's that. That's the part that be killing me. But I, I had to like recently, you know, like even just being on social media, like I had to limit my time, you know, on social media because like you see how people feel like they're experts and everybody's like, you know, know it all. You know, everybody has this opinion that's just right. And like, um, while people are entitled to their opinion, like yeah. I had to realize, like, I can't, I can't entertain. I can't entertain the the gap yet. Yeah, straight up. I just, I just, you know. But this man, this this has been such a great interview because I really felt like we got to get dive into the the heart and mind of an artist. You know, because people who are making just music just to be popular, you know, they just they just feel offended yeah. because people didn't like them. You know what I'm saying? Or they didn't get the popularity yeah. they wanted. Yeah. You're coming from a standpoint of this is my heart. You guys are stepping on my heart. You know what I'm saying? You're stepping on, yeah. you know, my, my soul's intentions towards this music to you. You know what I mean? So it's just this is the, this is yeah. just a really dope introspective uh, that you provide us with today, man. I, and I appreciate it, man. Hey, man. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm literally like, like for me to believe that I could have a career making music and traveling the world doing it takes a very childlike thing. It takes me to be in a fetal position. 
asking God, like, can I? You know what I'm saying? I come from a little small city on the side of the ocean, you know what I mean? Like, Oceanside, California, North County, San Diego, you know? Like, for me to even think that is like, you know, I have to have this childlike faith. And I'm in a fetal position a lot of times, like, yeah. hand to mouth being fed, you know? And then you get somebody, you know, talking about what you do with this, like, insensitivity, you know? And the, 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 the other side of John wants to come out and be like, yo, bruh, like, you know, where do you live? You know, like, but, yeah. but, but I mean, it's been a, a humbling process, you know, to like understand that, like, I can't be that way. And, um, you know, it sucks that there's people that actually do kind of peddle this whole popularity music thing. Um, even in like our niche market, like it's this popularity thing, you know, and it's like, uh, making music that's just hot right now and like i understand that you know what i mean but like it's like nah man this it's deeper than that for me you know yeah it's deeper than that. And, it's, and, it, and you can see it well john i want to i want to play this uh track you came out with with jay gibbons cousin neighbor um yep. lm2fy and then we're going to come back and talk to you a little bit more so this is a uh, cousin neighbor john gibbs jay gibbons right here on gorilla cross speak life radio we're here live with john gibbs and we're going to talk to him a little more about what it what it means to have a good team around you, not just musically, but spiritually as well, um, in order to develop as a good artist. So here it is, Cousin Neighbor, brand new track, dope track, one of my favorite tracks of 2015, early uh, year so far, right here on GorillaCross.com. Speak Live Radio. From a tie direction, death the life, a dash on the spectrum. Meshed in with the dash of the west winds. I'm a west west kid, ride on my enemies most. Cause my enemy is in me most. Time's timeless, highness, I'm in coach. Flying when I should have been in first class. I'm trying, I'm a trial run in the mile race. Trouble by the mile fun with the vile taste. Meanwhile, he's a wild son with the wild chase. Hasten to the throne, I'm a child by grace. Good God, give me more snare. Little drummer boy, I'm living in the war here. Like the children in the desert, I'm a peasant with a promise. To be honest, God, I didn't know you were here. In an atlas, blacks with no map quest, Atlas, West, West, African lab rats, middle of the passage, murderers, banished to the land of the Aztecs, came. Nah. Match this with a pair of West, West, black kids, death life, black, white, chest, chest, that's this, life in a labyrinth, labyrinth, trapped in a field where the corn is the maze. maze. All that to say that we trapped in a gang, two pack, ten, twelve pack, black to the brain, no ears. Jeremiah Timothy, John G, palm trees, in the me Psalms 3 and the waves lost in the cart in the snare to find the lion was there cat a 939 time striped like a tiger to find us and take take what you and I couldn't bear oh my Southern California play a list it, right? 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 Southern Southern California play a list it, right? Southern California play a list it, right? Southern Southern California play a list it, right? Southern California play a list it, right? Yeah, welcome back to Speak Life Radio. That's Cousin Neighbor, LM2FY. 
We have John Gibbs on the phone live right now. Man, when that song came out a couple weeks ago, it, it, I mean, it blew my mind because of all the music that had been coming out um, around that time frame. Uh, a couple weeks before, like at the end of the year, there's just a lot of stuff that was coming out. There's a lot of turn up stuff. Turn it, it's up, like everything yeah. in Christian hip hop was turn up or just like gimmicky. And to be real, like me personally, and, and you know, I don't hold back. It was getting on my nerves. Like the music was getting on my nerves. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't hold back, John. But when this yeah, came out, like it, it, it was re- <laughs> it, this track was really refreshing. Like it really was like Something just the whole vibe. Like yeah. and I think it hit everybody the same way. Like I saw the reaction online and the fact you guys have like 17,000 hits on this song on SoundCloud already. Yeah. And you didn't get pushed or backed no by no major block. No major block. Like, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, other than y'all, you know, Gorilla Cross, you know, and shout out to y'all for that. But like, like we didn't want, like, we didn't want to do it that way, you know. Like, I, I'm very grateful for the people that play it, you know. And I think that it's, you know, we wanted to slow it down and like actually make people listen and realize, like, yeah, you really do have to lose yourself, yeah, to find God, you know, like you do. And I think that sometimes the noise don't help you lose yourself. You kind of just be like, I don't know, it's. It's different. And I like the promo video. The little promo clip that y'all did for the song. We was rocking the pull ups and Jay Givens was jumping. Oh up yeah, that was we was just vibing one day, dog. Like we was just vibing. It wasn't even like like I don't even know, it kinda just came together and kinda made sense after we looked at it. So we was just vibing. But yeah. check but check this out though. You know what I'm saying? Next time next time I get a chance to kick it with you, I'm challenging you to yeah. a pull up contest, man. I'm, I'm a chunky dude, but I think I got you, though, man. Uh, John, I don't know. Uh, nah, I don't know. Man, they prepared I got, for that. They prepared for that. I got, my, I got my Vegas money on Gibbs. Oh, man, I can, I can knock out a strong I got, six. I'm sure you can. I'm sure I can you knock get out some. a strong six. I got that county stamina. <laughs> Yo, man, tell us about your relationship with, with Jay Givens. You know what I'm saying? You guys came out with this song. Nobody knows what's going to come up or come from Cousin Neighbor. You know what I'm saying? But, but I like that. But just tell like us, that. tell us about your relationship with Jay. And a lot Man, of people get you guys confused, my, and I think oh. this song is gonna help get get them unconfused. Yeah, that's like man, if people people get us confused, you know. Um, my name is John. His name is Jeremiah. The J and J giving stands for Jeremiah. Maybe not that helps out a little bit, but that's my brother, man. Like my cousin, but like my brother, though, like. Yeah. You know, that dude, like, what's mine is his. I, I don't ever withhold no, like, ideas I have um, from, like, from him. Like, if I feel like there's an idea I have for him, I give it to him, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see him go far, further than he, if not as far, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see, I want to see, because I just know in his heart, it's very similar to mine. And I, I feel like, I feel like God wants to move through people, like, ourselves yeah um and and we're kind of seeing the fruit of that you know in the people that do pay attention so like my relationship you know this dude come to my house and sleep in the spare room you know what i'm saying where i record at you know you know it's like that's my dog right there that's good man and and we were gonna talk to you uh when we left uh to play that song about just the importance of having a good team around you. You know what I'm saying? You're with King's Dream, Ruse Line and Belief. Tell yeah. us what what that's been like for you as a young artist coming up, having them, them in your life, having someone like Jay Givens in your life to be able to help create yeah. with you. How, how important has that been? And just on the spiritual tip to help you keep you accountable and, and, and stuff like that. Man, I mean, it's, it's, it was like, I mean, I kind of told y'all a story before in other other. Um, settings, but you know, Belief married my sister, and Ruslan was Belief's best man at the wedding. You know, so I really do life with those cats. You know, it's not just like uh, we came together for the sake of uh, music. Like we really do life together. So, like if I'm wilding out or if I'm tripping, which I do be doing, like you know, they'll sit me down. Like there's even been times where like they'll sit me down and just give me an honest truth and I like be pissed off you know yeah I don't know if that's politically correct to say on GorillaCross.com it's Freak Life Radio bro you can say anything on, out on, here on. come on son but but like uh, like I literally be pissed off almost to the point of like I'm, I'm trying to fight y'all you know like I need the hands you know but 
um, at the end of the day, like the position I'm in now, the the joy that I do have in my heart, you know, the joy of the Lord, like I owe it to to the people He's placed around me. Yeah. Um, in uh, belief and Ruslan and you know Jay, Jay Gibbons and you know even like the young homie, you know, like y'all, you know, Quan, you know, Twelve, you know what I'm saying, like like Simply T, uh. Kid, little kid, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> little kid, <laughs> he ain't little no more. You know what I'm saying? He ain't little. Shout out to kid, you know what I'm saying? That's like little bro still, you know. Like it's just the people that God put in my life to just show me my role more and more, and just like um, make me responsible to being that person in people's lives. Yeah, and um, I like and just I like, like they are in my life, you know. I like and how you broke that down, man. That, I like how you broke yeah, that down, yeah. you know, the, the intricacies of the relationship because me, me and Quan can relate. Me and Quan yeah. been doing this since 09. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. had our ups and our downs. You know, we almost came to blows and all the other stuff, <laughs> man. But at the end of the day... A couple mm-hmm. times, man. At, at, at the end I of threw the, a basketball at this guy before. Oh, no, I threw a basketball at you. No, I threw that at you, son. See, see, mm-hmm. we got we to go back to the archives. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <I'll> go right <laughs> now. <laughs> I got a ball. <laughs> But yeah, but like, no, sometimes yeah. I be want to screenshot my 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 group text messages with Kalen and Ruslan. They like today they have me feeling salty, but it's all good. I love them. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's good, man. So, dude, let everybody know where they can find you, and uh, I'm excited to interview you again when this album drops because I know, man, I can't wait. Do, do you have a projected date, or is that something you can't can't even say right now? Nah, I can't even say, man. I, I like Bruce Long about to put out something uh, real nice um, yeah. in, the, in the next few months, and uh, I'm coming after that. You know, I'm I'm not even like I'm not even done. I'm not even like feeling like I'm done. I'm not yeah. gonna try to sit here and get people like I was saying like in the beginning of this or the first half of this year. But I don't know. It could be the second half. I don't know. Yeah. I just know when it's done, it'll be right and like it will spread. And I believe that like in my soul because I know. How sure I am of things these days, you know. So that's good. I'm yeah. excited. For um, that, man. Yeah, I'm definitely excited for that. Now I'm excited for Ruslan's album that's about to come out uh, first or next off of King's Dream Entertainment. Are you uh, doing anything on, yeah. on his album? Yeah, I'm all through that joint. Um, Dope. Yeah, I'm all through that. Um, and what I like about um, you know some stuff on like background vocals and then like, I got a verse on there and a hook. Um, but uh, yeah, man, definitely look out for that. That's what's coming out next, and that's what we're we're very excited about right now. Um, you know, from my camp. Um, and then yeah, my album will come out, and then we'll do uh, hopefully uh, a, a retail Dream Junkies project. Um, yeah, man, it's just tour tour the world. Tour the world. That's the what world, I'm talking right? about, man. Don't sleep on King's Dream, man. That's all I gotta say, man. No. If you do, just have really nah, good dreams. <laughs> Straight up. We, we, nah, we sit, we sit at campfires and pray it, like, on some Indian dance type stuff. Like, not playing. <laughs> like, who's got babies to feed? No, no, like, no laughing. Like, Let's get it, though. got babies to yeah. feed, wives to feed. Like, we, we are going to tour the world and Let's bring home the bacon and know, love man. God and love people. That's what it's about, dude. That's really what it's about. Love God, right. love people. You know what I'm saying? I think that summed it up. And dude, I appreciate having you on, bro. I, I really just, you know, I've I've seen you grow a lot over the past two years of, of or two or three years of knowing you, and just seeing you grow, yeah. uh, not just musically, but you know, like for real as a man, and, and just you know taking yeah. responsibility for actions and, and and just seeing that it is really dope to me, and being able to know you, and know that like you're a legit dude because a lot of these people we see they put out quote unquote mm-hmm. Christian music, but you know their lifestyle doesn't seem to. Uh, follow that same path and, and being able to know you and know that that you are on that path that you talk about in your music. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout out to them. They show you know those type of people show you what not to do. You know, so shout out to them. Yeah, exactly. God bless. Real talk. So that's John Gibbs. We're gonna get into another track from Four Seasons, Mind Over Matter, featuring his brother-in-law, Belief, from the Dream Junkies. This is Mind Over Matter right here on Gorilla Cross Speak Life Radio, GorillaCross.com, SpeakLifeRadio.com. When we come back, we're going to get into Versus. Uh-oh. Brand new segment here on Gorilla Cross Speak Life Radio. Mind Over Matter. Feel. 